Okay, this video is going to just show you the, how to do some basic validation on the login system that we've created. So if we have a look, we've got these two text boxes and ideally when they click login, um, we didn't ought to bother even logging in if we haven't filled the two boxes in. So the most basic type of validation. Okay, um, we can do this quite easy. Um, if we go into view mode and look at the source code for the web page here we've got our two text boxes what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a blank line after each because that's where I'm going to stick the validation information okay so if I go to my toolbox scroll down past the standard stuff you should see there's loads of different types of categories of controls but we want the validation ones and these are the stock ones we've got compare which we'll use um, when we do the registration custom validator again we'll use that when we do the validation range for numbers so all the things that we've done in the theory work with basic validation that you can do regular expression validator is for doing crazy things like verifying something's an email web page and you can find loads of regular expressions on the uh, internet if you do a search for them for that. So you could do postcode validation and things like that quite easily using these horrible regular expressions. It's a language in itself. Um, it's like a grammar for text. So, you know, <coughs> I'll leave that up to you to have a mess with that, those ones. We're just going to check that they've put some in the boxes. So we're going to use the required field validator so we're going to drag one on and I'm going to drop it there okay scrolls on quite long okay so it's now gone design view out of sync so we'll do that right the easiest way to mess about with these is to mess about with the properties so in the design view I've selected the required field validate and I'm going to go to my properties window and I'm going to select it again because sometimes it does that. Right, so it's shown the properties for the required field validator. Now its name is set with the ID. I'm not going to call it required field validator one because that's stupid. So I'm going to call it, I'm going to put VD to mean validator uh, and I'm going to put this. Um, login name I'm going to call that one okay now the other thing that I want to change is error message so when they don't do the input properly I'm going to change the message to read um, must enter a your or enter your login name okay I'm going to change it to and then the other very important bit to change is the control that we're going to validate. So if I just make that a bit wider, they see that. So there's an option here under control to validate, and it should list the controls that would make sense for validation. So there we are, TX login name. Okay, so let's just, I don't really have to do anything. I'm just going to run it and see what it, what it does. So you won't see it on the screen to start with. There's a curious gap there, but let, let's just see what happens. I'm going to leave that one empty, and I'm going to type something in there, and I'm going to click log in. So when I click log in, it automatically, I don't have to do any work myself, it automatically checks the validation that we've got on the page. And because I didn't type anything in, it's moaning. Okay. If I now type something, it doesn't matter what, it goes away. This gap's a bit of a pain. So that's essentially how a validator works. It stops the information being sent. So when I click the button, it just doesn't work. So there you go, nothing in that box, but it's moaning. But it leaves this gap. Now we can stop it doing that. Okay, so if we go back to the design view and look at the properties for this again. Um, now, it's display, which is the property. It's static, which means always in the same place. Now what we can do is say dynamic and you'll see the difference straight away so I use this for all my validation controls when I use these things so if I run it now 
see this work. So there's no curious space. So when I do this now, it does that. Okay. So it appears when it has to, and it disappears. Let's add the other validator for the password box, and then you'll see them working together. So again, back to my validation, required field validator, drop it on for the password box, synchronize my view so you can see it. Change its ID first. So if you've got it in alphabet mode, that will appear actually at the top. Okay, so I'm going to put VD again, so this is going to be VD password. Okay. The error message is going to be must enter. You could make it more sophisticated than that. Oh, sorry, my touchpad acting like an idiot. Must enter your password. Okay. Change the display to dynamic. And for control to validate, of oh, this time I want the password box. Okay, so it's filled all that in for me, so it's easier to do it. So that's what it, the layout looks like, but not the dynamic layout. So if we run it, we'll see this working. So it'll only display the error message if there is a validation issue with that control. So if I put in Eric and try and log in, it's the password that it's moaning about. Now let's say I delete Eric and I put, see straight away, he's now moaning that they're both empty. So I'm going to put the password in, that validation disappears. Put two things in and it's quite happy to attempt to log me in. Um, and that's it with validation. I can't really think of anything else to do. You'll see more complicated validation when we do the registration and you'll see a custom one as well. Okay, that's it.